I can think of a few things that are much more fun than riding through a hurricane. I had a good night's sleep at the Carlsman Motel and I made a note in my day timer that the included breakfast was good. Okay, I'm showing 1044, but it's actually 1015. It's going to be like a sauna in my... It's going to be like a sauna in my rain jacket. The new mic in my helmet certainly does pick up the breathing. Sorry about that. Come on, I go. Just loaded some new routes in today. I pretty well know where I'm going. I don't have a long ride today, which is a good thing, because I'm going to be running into the remnants of Hurricane Beryl. Anyway, it flooded a lot of Nova Scotia. Okay, that's a little sloppy, but I've only got 300 kilometers pulling the trailer so far. I'm barely 10 minutes down the road and the pavement's already dry. Yep, it's not going to be a very long ride today. Okay, Provincial Park Road. So here's where I should have been staying last night for 30 bucks instead of 165. I did not want to be packing up in the wet. Now, maybe that's just... You know, it's early in the travel game. I'm not wanting too much inconvenience. I'm going to be wet for the next couple of days while riding, so... Do I dare take off this rain jacket?
I'm telling you, I kind of want to. I usually stop at the farmer's daughter for ice cream. And 11 o'clock in the morning is not too early for ice cream, really. But I guess I was full from breakfast. I did decide, though, that yes, I am going to get the rain jacket off. I have a dry bag on top of the trunk where I'm keeping my rain gear and my old army sweater. It's going to be months before I'm going to need the sweater. A lot of the Trans-Canada going through Cape Breton is only two lanes and not enough passing opportunities. So ease it back, take your time. For some reason, I always like getting to the Canso Causeway. Now the first time I crossed over was by ferry and I don't remember that, but it was about two years before the causeway actually opened. I do remember though, when there was a toll booth on the causeway. And I think you had to pay to come on to the island. Remember, it is Cape Breton Island. I always joke that I have to come to the mainland to play in traffic. Huh, I'll really be laughing when I hit Los Angeles in a month and a half. So I've been so used to the ST1300 and its 29 liter tank. And I think I've only got 21 or 23 liters in the gold wing. So I'm hitting gas stations that I don't normally go to. I have to really be looking at the gas gauge and, and the odometer and just trying to get a, a good feel for how far I can actually get. Now at this point, I only feel confident with hitting about 200 kilometers between fill-ups, which is good because that's also about the same time as I have to change camera batteries. So that works just fine. But it does mean on a lot of the part of this road that I know so well that I'm actually stopping in places I have not stopped before. Oh well, new things are always good. I have been checking the weather channel every time I stop, but I can also see by the clouds that I'm heading towards that, yeah, I'm going to be into some weather. I really do have to start syncing up this gas tank, my stomach, and when I need a pee break. Just outside New Glasgow is one of my usual stopping places. This time I'm not going to gas up, but no, I will have my Tim's and a sandwich. Then I'll be ready for the rest of the haul to my friend David's house.
Maybe I can get a sponsorship from Tim's. Maybe. What a difference 20 minutes can make. Okay, it is so warm, and I know that the uh, rain suit is not going to help me very much. Not in this kind of rain. You may notice that none of my cameras have got a waterproof housing on them. They actually do quite well in semi-wet weather. That Acaso on my front actually has got a cracked screen, so it will eventually fog up and then dry out and be just fine. The Wolfang 420s on the back on the trailer and the one on my chin are fine in the wet. Okay, that was fun. I was just in uh, Tim Hortons here in Debert. Random stop. And uh, another old fella sitting in the other booth. We talked for a second. He mentioned YouTube videos. He said he watched old guy on a bike. And <laughs> told him that's me. And he. Uh, He said, yeah, I thought it was. So, so that's Steve. Okay, there's something very wrong here with the GPS. <laughs> so I'm heading for Spring Hill. And I'm going to be absolutely soaked by the time I get there. But it's... It's warm soaked. I won't even need a shower tonight. Glen home in Amherst. That's where I'm headed. I just have to go a short ways still on the Trans-Canada before I get off the road and take what would normally be an actually a nice scenic drive. Today it's not going to be quite so scenic. So I'm braving the weather 
and on my way to visit David and Donna. David and I have been good friends since we were five. But like a lot of good friends, you know, you start to, you start adulthood and you lose track of each other and just don't get the time. Well, in the last five years, we've tried to make a little bit more time for each other. The Gold Wing has got a really good protective envelope. Doesn't stop me from getting wet. And I do fog up. And there are times when seeing where I'm going is not really easy. I'm also not very familiar with this road. There's other people who are, and I'm starting to get a few vehicles piled up behind me. Luckily, churches usually have got good parking lots. And I've got to check exactly where I'm going. As the GPS, I just don't totally rely on it sometimes. Now, sometimes the GPS has a little trouble with rural addresses. So I call David just to check on the address, and he says, well, if you got to the church, you haven't got here yet. And we're not that far down the road. And it starts to sound like, well, when you come to, to Aunt Martha's house, uh, but she's moved, look for the white picket fence, but the, oh shoot, that fell down a few years ago. But I'll tell you, if you come to a long curve and you get to a bridge at the end of the curve, you've gone too far. Oh, heck. I'll just go out and stand by the side of the road and wave you down. Now with 900 pounds of motorcycle and another 450 pounds of trailer, I have found that there are some things I don't want to get into. It turns out that David's driveway is, well, um, at least an eighth of a mile. And it's dirt road, which is fine, it's well packed. But uh, he does admit that it actually ends up on grass. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be impossible. Uh, you know what, I think I better just pull it in and leave it up there. Because uh, this... Yeah, we'll I'm not even sure if I'll be able to get this rig turned around tomorrow. We might have to unhook the trailer, but that's tomorrow. For tonight, we're just gonna load a few things into David's car, drive down to his place. I'm gonna get dry. We're gonna have lots of great food, good conversation. It's been a wet day, but a good day. And it's just the beginning. Thank you for coming along.